Tax bases, tax rates, and tax structures. This is from Chapter 12, Section 3. Let's start with tax bases. Tax bases are simply that thing that is taxed. So if we're talking about income, it's a person's income. Your personal income is taxed. That's the tax base. Or it might be goods sold at a store if we're talking about a sales tax. Or it might be a piece of property. But tax base is simply the thing that is taxed. Now, tax rate is the percent of your income or the percent of that value of good or the percent of the value of property that you have to pay for the tax. So, for example, if we have the, an income tax rate set at 20%, then that means that taxpayers would have to pay 20% of their income in taxes. Slightly more complicated is tax structure, and that's what we'll spend most of our time talking about. Tax structure refers to how much money does a tax take from which people. Let's look at our first example. The first type of tax structure that we'll talk about is a proportional tax. Sometimes this is called a flat tax because a proportional tax takes the same share or the same percent of income for all income levels. That's why it's called a flat tax. It doesn't change. Here's an example. If we have a 10% income tax rate and it is a proportional tax or a flat tax, then that simply means everybody pays 10% of their income. Somebody who makes $25,000 a year would pay $2,500 in taxes. That's 10% of their income. Somebody who makes $250,000 a year would pay $25,000 in taxes. That's 10% of their income. It's a proportional tax structure. That means that it does not change based on your income level. One of the main benefits of a proportional tax structure, it is very simple and it's very, very easy to collect. It doesn't cost a lot of money to calculate. It doesn't cost a lot of money to collect. It doesn't cost a lot of money to check. Everybody pays the same rate, so it's pretty simple. But some of the criticisms are whether or not it's fair. Critics have said that a proportional tax structure makes the poor have to pay more than they have the ability to pay. The poor have less ability to pay 10% of their income than somebody who makes a lot more than them. So for example, that person who pays $2,500 of their $25,000 is going to suffer more from having to pay that tax than somebody who pays $25,000 on a $250,000 salary. As a result, proportional tax structures oftentimes have to be set low enough so that the poor can afford to pay. And what that means is the rate is low for everyone. And as a result, there's less money for government. And when there's less money for government, that means government can't do as many things, can't build as many roads, schools, bridges, can't provide as good of fire protection, police protection, military protection, and all the things that government uses tax money for. The next type of tax structure we'll talk about is a progressive tax structure. A progressive tax structure takes a larger share as income increases. Progressive tax structures are based heavily on what you read about in Chapter 12, Section 2, and that's that ability to pay principle. Those that can pay more do pay more. That's the ability to pay principle. A good example of this is our federal income tax. Now, some people have suggested that we should switch to a proportional or flat tax, but currently we use a federal income tax that is progressive. Here, let me show you. Now, this is from 2011, but it hasn't changed dramatically. Somebody who makes less than $8,500 on their own would pay a tax rate of 10% of their income. Now, somebody who makes between, let's say, $83,600 and $174,400, they would pay 28% of their income. So you can see how the tax rate increases as somebody's salary increases. Why do people do, why do we use this? Well, one of the positives is that it puts more of the tax burden on those who can afford to pay. So in other words, those people 
who have money and can afford to pay higher taxes do pay higher taxes. One of the common criticisms with our progressive tax structure for our income tax and for all progressive taxes is that they're more complex. They're more complicated. They require more manpower and hours to collect because they are so much more complicated. The last type of tax structure that we'll talk about is a regressive tax structure. This takes a smaller share as income increases. That's right. A regressive tax structure takes a lower percentage of income as your income increases. Here's the thing about regressive tax structures. They are not intentional. They are not designed to work that way. But a tax is regressive when it takes a larger percent from the poor than from the wealthy. And the most common example of this is a sales tax. Let's look at how. Let's say the sales tax is 5% and Heidi earns $20,000 a year. And let's say in that year, Heidi spends $10,000 on taxable goods. She buys $10,000 worth of stuff that she has to pay sales tax on. Well, over the course of that year, Heidi will end up paying $500 in sales tax. And that works out to be 2.5% of her income, 2.5% of her $20,000 a year salary. On the flip side, let's look at Keenan. Keenan makes $100,000 a year. Let's say Keenan buys $30,000 worth of taxable goods. Keenan buys three times as much stuff as Heidi that year. Well, Keenan will end up paying $1,500. But that amount of tax is only 1.5% of his income. It is a smaller percentage of his income than Heidi paid. And Keenan earns more than Heidi. So this is why a sales tax is often regressive.